One of the many things that invested Linux users tell you is if you want to use Linux without many headaches, then make sure to get an AMD graphics card. And yes, AMD GPUs have many advantages over Nvidia. You don't have to install a driver, which on some distros can be a hassle. You get away with better wallet integration, which makes your desktop feel way more responsive, even though it still has many limitations. And well, the open source Mesa driver nowadays is way better when it comes to performance in most games. This of course heavily depends on the games you play. Even with all of these advantages over Nvidia, I did not have a flawless experience. Let's talk about it. And while you're here, definitely make sure that you like the video and also subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Alright, let's start off with the installation process. In order to upgrade from an NVIDIA card to an AMD GPU, the first thing that you should do is to uninstall the NVIDIA driver and restart your PC in order to switch away from proprietary kernel modules. Then you simply shut down the PC, swap the graphics cards and boot it up. Should be easy enough. Well, to my surprise, I discovered that my PC couldn't boot up Fedora anymore. I tried several different kernels and even rescue mode, which, by the way, failed to some home directory being inaccessible and Fedora does not have a root user set by default. Pretty neat. Wait. Alright, boot from a live USB stick, back up the data and reinstall the system. This was the fastest way for me personally. Now I'm still not sure if the new card actually caused this or it was a power spike in my new PSU. Nonetheless, something happened. Right, so within just a few minutes I reinstalled my programs and surprise surprise, DaVinci Resolve did not work out of the box with Mesa. Even though it already did on my surface with an Intel GPU, so what happened? Now AMD and content creation in general is somewhat of a mixed experience, since they haven't quite catched up with Nvidia yet. With OpenCL as a sort of CUDA alternative, it has become really good, if the program supports it. But here's the thing, OpenCL is not equal OpenCL. In fact, on Linux, due to its open source nature, most Linux distros just use the open source Mesa implementation of OpenCL, which allows you to open DaVinci Resolve. But that's just about it. Quick little note here, at the time that you're watching this video, this problem might not exist anymore. And yeah, on my system, DaVinci Resolve had exactly this issue. Well, no problem. According to Glorious Agroll, who managed to get Resolve working on Obara, a Fedora based distribution, all you have to do is install ROCM OpenCL, which is a custom version that works quite well. Spoiler, it didn't. Ok, so what now? Install the AMD Pro driver and disregard the advantages of Mesa? Well, certainly an option. However, if you're not on Ubuntu, CentOS or Red Hat, the installation can be a bit tricky on some distros. So be prepared to run into many issues. There's also one final way on how you can get the Vinch Resolve to work on Linux. You build and install just the OpenCL part of the AMD Pro driver. Yeah, it's not the most elegant version, but luckily we can just use several versions of OpenCL, since I have to add a custom command in order for it to run with the proprietary one. Pretty neat actually. Alright, the Vinci Resolve is a piece of work, but the newer versions of the Mesa driver, it might already run out of the box. I even started it without the proprietary OpenCL module once, and it worked. So something already got updated on my system. OpenCL issues are still very common on AMD hardware and Linux, simply because the developers of applications just focus on the most solidified OpenCL version, which is the Pro version. Now this is not bad, and it actually helps with development. It's just a bit more complicated for the end user, objectively. <laughs> um, next up is OBS. Let me tell you, if you were wondering on why the last video got delayed a bit, that was the reason. OBS is a program that basically works the same as on Windows and macOS, but on Linux we have a problem of fragmentation, which also applies to packaging systems. On every single Linux distro, it's basically a hit or miss if a certain application is in the official repos, and if those repos are even enabled by default. Now the thing that almost every distro supports are Flatpaks. And lucky for us, OBS does officially support Flatpak so we don't have to rely on a third person, which maintains the updates in repos otherwise. But OBS Flatpak has a lot of issues. Some of them include the crashing of the whole desktop environment when changing settings in the streaming tab, weird artifacts when using VAAPI to access AMD hardware acceleration, or just straight up performance issues on every single preset, even on X264. 
Now, the bug of crashing the whole desktop environment has been fixed. However, the other two are real issues. Like I said in earlier videos, I don't blame a certain group of people saying it's the fault of those developers, it's the fault of the community. But what I am saying is that these issues do happen and they happen only on AMD and not on Nvidia. So if you're on an AMD GPU and you want to use OBS, then make sure to install it the correct way. The Flappic version has a lot of artifacts and the repo version from RPM Fusion on Fedora does not have a browser source. So the best thing you can do is to build it from source. But be aware that on some distros some dependencies might be missing. You can find some common solutions regarding OBS problems on my personal Discord server. So definitely make sure to check it out. But otherwise, it runs fine. Is AMD better than Nvidia on Linux? Objectively and performance wise, yes, but it heavily depends on your use case. Like I said before, generally speaking, AMD lags a bit behind Nvidia when it comes to content creation, simply because not every single program out there does support OpenCL. AMD GPUs also still have worse hardware acceleration when it comes to encoding videos with OBS or similar, but at least this year we saw some nice changes to it. Where AMD really shines though is the overall experience. You don't have to install a driver, browser hardware acceleration for videos and <sighs> cloud gaming also works. The performance, as I'm recording this video, is better than Nvidia, but this of course depends on the games you play and the release date. And you have access to FreeSync and variable refresh rates on Wayland, if your compositor and desktop environment already support it. On Nvidia, FreeSync on Wayland does not work at all. That being said, was my decision to switch from Nvidia to AMD good, bad or even unnecessary? The truth is that besides those hiccups regarding content creation, I don't regret it. I didn't buy an AMD GPU because I'm on Linux. I bought an AMD GPU because it was more performance for the buck right now. I just could have as easily gone with Nvidia. Yes, Mesa has become really really good and it often outperforms Nvidia GPUs. But it still does not mean that you have much of a lesser experience. Besides the performance boost and your feature of a more recent GPU, I literally don't notice any differences. So choose whatever you like. Just be aware that very new GPUs like the RTX 40 series, Intel Arc or even the new AMD GPUs might not be perfect on Mesa yet. But even with those problems, you could still use them or even install the proprietary drivers. So yeah, that's it. Only a few problems with content creation occurred. And trust me, a lot of time got invested in fixing these problems. But otherwise, the experience is not much different than on any other GPU. Simply because a lot of Linux distributions have become very easy nowadays when it comes to installing a graphics driver. And that's where I leave it. So if you've liked this video then definitely make sure to show it with a like and if you're new to the channel, also subscribe. Go on, I know you want to. Oh, by the way, you should also check out this video right here. And all that's left to say now is... Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.